Hello everyone. Welcome to part four of the debugging recitation for fall 2023 of 1175. I'm Harshit and here we will be going across the other two error types which are there, which is the time issue and the memory issue. Now, after debugging all of the other errors we spoke about using the different techniques that Shikhar and me have described it from parts one to three, and you've got your model running, but let's say you, your model takes about 40 minutes to train, but ideally it's supposed to take 10 minutes looking at what the TAs have suggested and the other students. Now, what do you do in this situation? Because you ideally would not want to wait so long. First, you would like to check if your model, if your code is using GPU, because sometimes it might be that GP, the GPU is not being used. GPU is meant, uh, GPUs are meant to run code faster, do the computations, matrix multiplications faster, and they help they'll go a long way in improving the computation time. Now, in batch size is a parameter which you might need to hyperparameter tune because batch size you can make keep it in a range of 32 to 128 as long as you're as large as your GPU can handle. What that means is that if you batch size involves sending in data all together at once so that they can all be processed in parallel and done faster instead of them doing it instead of doing it all sequentially. Now you should only increase the batch size up to a point that the GPU can handle because after this point, the GPU will be forced to break it down, break it down and eventually will be slower. Because for example, if your GPU can only handle 64 and you give your batch size as 128, what this would make the GPU do is that it would process it not in a batch, but divide it into sub problems, which would inherently further be slower. This is a parameter which you might need to tune and kind of explore as the watch back size would be the best and make a note of what time it's taking. Now, most of the iterations that happen are in the data loader in the training loop, wherein when the code is running, the loop might be running millions of times. Now it would make here, it would be, it would make sense to go through this code before making the model run completely so that each iteration is being done in a reasonable amount of time. And so that these millions of iterations, for example, do not take a long time and are in fact leading to the slow epoch runtime. Now use the next suggestion would be use mixed precision while training. Now, what is mixed precision? So most of the deep learning operations that are involved use floating point numbers that require high precision. However, some of these operations can be completed using low precision, and this can lead to a significant reduce in memory and compute. As a result, there would be, as you go across through the semester and in other recitations, we will be explaining how mixed precision works in doing the hackathons, which you can, and you can also read up about it online, which you can use to reduce the time that each epoch is taking. Now, in order to identify which part of the code is taking long, Collab is really good in identifying in code chunks, or you could use the time module to specify when to start, when or which part of the code is taking long. Now, let's say, let's go to the other type of error, which is the memory issue. Now, for example, let's say your model trains normally in a reasonable amount of time, but after 30 epochs, you say that your computer ran out of memory and then it resets everything. This is a common issue that happens in Collab. Now, how do you deal with this? One of the best practices to deal with this is that in or is that all the time you should always save your best epoch after each epoch is strained by using a metric. You will learn this as you go along in the course. Now, what that does is that even though your computer runs out of memory or some crash happens, you would have saved your last model and you can start retraining it from that particular model only. This can save a lot of computation time. If you put too many things on the GPU, you will see a runtime error which says CUDA out of memory. Now, the things to try here would be to reduce the batch size, use the mixed precision to reduce the memory used for the high precision numbers, and also look at this particular tutorial on homework for homework, part, which can help in solving homework part twos. Here, mixed precision is highly useful, which I have found and most of the TAs have found to be useful. Instead of looking for more compute, you should always look for code which can make the existing compute work better. Another type of error here 
this character can is this is the same one but you can experience this in other the way which is that if you if you did not use torch to inference mode during validation testing what that happens is that this function is meant to disable the gradient calculation which is only needed for learning the weights during the backward propagation of training as a result you, during testing and validation you do not need you do not you can you do not need to compute gradients as a result you can set torch start inference mode to true and then run the validation and testing this reduces the memory consumption and can be a way to resolve the CUDA out of memory error now also if you can call torch start CUDA dot empty cache it can help reduce memory fragmentation in certain cases look for the look for the documentation on how this is used Stack Overflow has a bunch of information, and this can help also resolve the CUDA out of memory error. Forgetting to move data to the GPU for the training gives you an error of ejected of expected object of device type CUDA, but got device type CPU for training validation as well as other phases of the model pipeline. Now, how do you resolve this? And why does this happen? In order to train for a model on the GPU, it is first necessary to send the model itself to the GPU so that the GPU has access to it. This is uh, this is achieved by doing device equal to CUDA and then moving that to the device. The second requirement is that in order for this model to access the variables that are needed for training, such as X data, the training data, and the labels, all of these also need to be moved to the GPU and it is imperative to make sure that this has been done to avoid getting the error that was given in the last slide. If you're not careful, there might be a mismatch between the locations of the different data being used in a function. In order to find out whether this is happening, you can print the device of each variable or model by just calling dot device, or, and in order to resolve this, once you find that out, you can move it to the CPU or the GPU in order to figure that out. Now this concludes our debugging recitation. Now what we have learned is that no matter we can or we always learn we always learn different ways to debug our errors. Stack Overflow is a really good resource for it, and the TAs are always here to help. Thank you.